One of the children on the other side of Cabo is Ervin. Ervin, I've known him since he was a little kid. I got to watch him grow up <laughs> pretty much. Ervin is passionate about nursing roosters back to health that were injured in the cockfighting ring. They would otherwise be killed. I really love animals. I learned how to help them. I ask veterinarians because I know one or two, some of them, and they are teaching me how to do things uh, to help my animals. His work with animals made him think about going to medical school, but his dream is to become a pilot. Ervin's family moved to Cabo San Lucas to escape the violence of Acapulco. I experienced something really, really bad, awful, scary when I was eight years old with my mom and my youngest brother. So we were walking downhill and we started listening gunshots. I saw uh, this man got shot on his head and was terrifying because I saw the explosion of, of the shotgun and suddenly the blood coming. And my mom tried to cover my eyes but I still see. His uncle, who was working as a taxi driver, was also killed in Acapulco. That's when the family left. And then uh, we decided to leave Acapulco because it was very dangerous for the family, for us to still living there. So that's why we are here. Growing up in Mexico, Teresa understands the dangers all too well. When I was a child, uh, the danger of, of the streets, uh, the drunk people on the streets, and being a little one, you can easily be raped or killed, kidnapped from teenager, escaping from drugs, or people trying to use you to sell drugs. Uh, that's very common in Mexico. Mexico's National Statistics Institute reports more than 32,000 killings in 2022. The previous year, Mexico's homicide rate per 100,000 inhabitants was about 28. By comparison, the homicide rate in the U.S. that same year was about 7.8 per 100,000 people. Much of the violent crime in Mexico is attributed to disputes between drug cartels. At some point, what is was so dangerous, a lot of crime, uh, mafias and all that, and, and I used to hang with not very good people. So I feel that if I don't live what is, I can be killed, or my family, my children. So I have the opportunity to move to, to Las Vegas and start a new life. But for Ervin's family, for so many, even Cabo San Lucas isn't isolated from crime and the devastating effects of poverty. Living in that extreme poverty here in Cabo San Lucas, there's gangs, there's thieves. Because of that, children, teenagers start wanting to deal drugs because it's the only easy way not the right way, but they see an easy way to, to earn money for their families. And also the rain, when it rains hard, many of us lose their homes. But Ervin's family is working for a better life. Ervin's dad, I mean, every time we see him or whenever me and him get to talking, he gets really sentimental. He just tells us how grateful he is and how he's never going to be able to repay us back for what, done, what we've done for his family and Ervin and the kids. Ervin and his brother are great students. Their parents encourage education. Ervin was the first in his extended family to finish high school. How do you measure success? Uh, we have to prepare ourselves uh, for the fact that many of our kids will not finish high school. You have to appreciate the success stories that come. Ervin is starting flight school. The Bodles put together a GoFundMe page to help Ervin realize his dreams of becoming a pilot, with supporters giving money to help pay tuition. The work of the other side of Cabo continues because the heart of the organization will never forget where she came from and how she was able to succeed. Sometimes I go to the bakery stores and just look around and just eat a piece of bread. That's why I, I love my children in Cabo, because I'm one of them. They live in a dirt road 
with a lot of debris, a lot of glass. So sad, so bizarre to see them, all the things that they go through. I want them to have the same opportunities as me because they're smart, so brilliant. They just need uh, opportunities. Only God knows what I've been through too. to be here now and alive and if I will do whatever I can do to help them. For more information about this Tennessee-based nonprofit organization, visit theothersideofcabo.com. <laughs>